Oops. Hello, hey. people. Hey. Hey, girl. So, should we just do them in order? That we drink them there? Quick shout out to three awesome partners who helped make Chop and Brew episodes possible. BSG Handcraft, Imperial Yeast, our big homies over at Imperial Yeast, and all of the awesome Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash chop and brew. It's Chop and Brew everybody, welcome to my garage, I'm Chip Walton, this is Badass Brian Adams. What up people? What are we about to drink Brian Adams? We're going to drink some Saison made with Napoleon Yeast from Imperial y'all. The greater picture, what are we about to drink? We are experimenting with Cezanne yeast. We did, I set up a little experiment with some of the crew from Chop and Brew. Everybody has the same malt bill, and everybody's got a different yeast, or a couple of different yeasts. So I used five different yeasts. Boom. Made a 10-gallon batch of uh, this beer, the base. Split it five ways. Dumped in full packs of yeast. Chip did not like that idea. He thought maybe it wouldn't be good for the, for the, uh, for the yeast. But I was like, no, nah, man. This is badass Brian Adams. Dumping it all in. I ain't got time to be measuring and splitting shit. <laughs> Dump it in. Imperial, which are already, like, notably higher cell count. And now you're putting them into, like, <laughs> right. one-fifth of scale. <laughs> they so it's like 500% more yeast than you need or yeah, something. Yeah, fermented out in three days. Yeah. But, hey, <laughs> it worked. So we're going to drink five of these nine that we ultimately better. had. I don't know if we'll do tasting notes on all a of them. Nine? But no, we're not going to do all so nine. So tell the people where you got your inspiration for the, um, um, the experiment and why we did this. So the experiment that we I created was from Drew Beecham's book, Experimental Brewing. Right? Right? Yep, yep. And he had a grain bill in there, 8.75 eight, eight, uh, 8 pounds of Pilsner malt, 8 ounces of flaked wheat, a pound of table sugar is what we all used. We should have had an OG of 1048. It called for 22 IBUs, which came out to, uh, I used Magnum, uh, 0.35 ounces at 60 minutes, and almost a half an ounce of Zafir. 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 At Zafir. 15 minutes. Not the Saffir. Zafir. We just had a an internet rabbit hole trying to figure out how to pronounce that. But mm -hmm. a German guy on the internet says it is Zafir. Zafir. So, yeah, not a lot of hop, mm -mm. not a lot of, like, characterful malt. Um, the idea is this is his, like, base recipe, and correct me if I'm wrong, whenever he's testing a new yeast or maybe a new spice element or a new hop. So, w would you agree that this is a fairly neutral very recipe? Neutral. Very neutral. Dare say almost, I wouldn't say boring, but it's just, like, very plain. There's no extra spicing. There's no, like, grains right. of paradise. There's no black pepper. There's no some of those things that you might see thrown in a saison. So right. this is a clean control yeah. recipe to test a bunch of yeasts. Right, and I think it was good because you don't get influence from malts or hops or any spice addition. You can really dial in what do you want from your your yeast. What character do you want to come out? And I think we talked about when you add those <coughs> other spices, it could the the yeast really could bring out more of that character or the hops like right as i taste these i'm like uh i wish we had been able to play with the hops but i understand the point so mm -hmm. so i brewed um two i brewed a five gallon batch split it in half it was all grain um i steeped the flaked wheat as the water was pretty much coming up to temperature or maybe i got it to like 150 and then i did the pills malt and then the table sugar is a very simple and actually kind of fun brew day. It was a really pretty brew day. I took some pictures, some oh. some National Geographic type video of like our hostas and our flowers and some bees getting down on the wow. herb garden. Back like, to the beer. No, it was fun. It was it a beer like that with not a lot of stuff going on allows you some time to kind of like mess around. But so I used Imperial's um, Suburban Brett. Mm-hmm. And I use Bootlegger Biology's uh, Mad Fermentationist blend, which is kind of a mashup yep. um, with Michael Tonsmeyer. Yeah. And then you we, brewed with, with uh, sorry, I'm getting all Imperial um, Napoleon, Imperial Rustic. Which is what's in the glass. Imperial Workhorse. I did Bootleg Saison Parfait. And I did uh, 
Seafail BE-134, which, I'm sad to say, I screwed up on. You didn't even bring it. I did not bring it. No, 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 no. Uh, well, let me go back to all the beers. So, we when we were starting this project, there was some talk of saisons would stall. And so we were trying to pick a date that everybody could come together and drink beer. And uh, this idea or this thought that saisons will stall. So doing some research, I looked in and found that uh, if you don't put an airlock on it, that could um, lessen the back pressure on your beer and the saison won't stall. So I decided, fine, I'm going to do all my beers. All the airlock, um, Carboys had um, sanitized tinfoil. And then I had two buckets that I just didn't push down all the way, so it kind of cracked open. I let them ferment for, I think it was four days. I noticed, um, looked in there and saw a lot of crows in, and I was like, ooh, let me go stress these out. So I threw them in my garage mid-summer. Oh, to bump up the heat. Yep, bump up the heat. And it was probably 95 degrees in the garage. And, uh, oh, at that point, I don't think I saw any more bubbles, but I saw the, the crows in. Not a lot of bubbling going on. Threw them in the in the um, garage and they took off again. So ten fifty one, OG yep. nine nine seven final, yep. something like seven <clears throat> percent alcohol. Right. We all noted pepper, grassy, oh. spicy, um, citrusy. I said medium light body, bit of spritz and carbonation, but that I would drink a pint of it. Now that we're so, like Brian was saying, sorry, we're getting all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we gave this thing like two and a half months. A, to make up for a stall, should there be one. Yep. And B, Brian wanted everybody to bottle condition it, which did not happen. Um, well, so we met up last Friday, yep. August 17th, um, and not everybody showed up. There were some flakes. Yeah. But That's okay. by proxy, they sent their beers. So we had nine beers. Um, <laughs> so the point is, this is Napoleon. You know, Imperial Napoleon it describes it as producing very dry, crisp beers, nice citrus notes. Um, confirm it, 65 to 78. Yeah. And you said you pushed it. Pushed it. Yay, yay. I think I'm getting a little more spice. I yeah. wonder if it's going to age and get some other characters. But it, it, for sure, to me, it tastes a little different than last week. Yeah. But you get dry, like that slightest beginnings mm -hmm. of a little funk. But citrus, pear, I mean, mm -hmm. there, were, there were a lot of words throughout all of these that popped yeah. out. Citrus, yep. fruit, apple, pear. We were using like the kind of quick judging form for like uh, homebrew competitions, but then obviously there was room to write, and I clearly wrote more on the on the right <clears throat> side mm -hmm. as always. But and they were all pretty bone dry. I mean, they were fairly. Yep, there were two that we crazy. noted as being a little more rounder, but they were still like one zero zero two mm -hmm. one zero zero four yeah so many of these finished below one zero zero it was like a cider <laughs> cider tasting yeah. so anything to note of that or should we just move on to I this think video move on. move on do you want to just should we do these in order well do you want to do bootleg yeah let's do bootleg we should have we should have organized this better and done like rounder to driest that way we don't like bounce well they're all pretty dry the roundness is going to be round like a triangle. Round like a triangle. Mm -hmm. So here we go. And they all pretty much... Ooh, uh, put me out of focus. focus. There, there I am. They all turned out pretty much this kind of light gold straw colored. It's, again, it's just pills. Mm -hmm. and um, It might have been mixed up in the car, so all that yeast is... And some wheat. Going so crazy. this is bootlegger biology. <clears throat> Mad fermentationist. They kind of got together... The bottom line is final master blend consists of Saison, yeast, Saccharomyces, rare Brett, and an opportunistic uh, lactobacillus culture. So when I brewed mine, both of the things that I had had two totally different um, fermentation ranges. This one claiming that it could go into the 80s. So mm -hmm. my basement was 80, 78, 80 at the time. So I just let this one rock with a towel over it. I put a very thin, like, kind of ice pack around one part of it. Um, but the other beer we'll drink later, Suburban Brett, I full-on put it in a tub of water. I was changing out frozen um, oh, keeping it apple juice bottles filled with water twice a day to try to keep it. I think I, I managed to keep it, like, 68, 70. And then I let it kind of creep up. But this one, this is my hot one, if you were going to call it that. Okay. 
So mine are kegged. I failed on the bottle conditioning, but I kegged them like super high. They sat at 21 for about a week, and then I brought them down to about 8. Clean. I like this one. Yep. It's herbal. It's got that slightest bit of like mint, but it's still peppery. A little bit of funk. Yep, there's a little bit of funk coming through. It's definitely dry though. So it's interesting that all these have the same kind of hopping because some of them taste more bitter, mm -hmm. but that's got to be just all these other bugs, Brett, Lacto. Yeah. Both of mine are also ones that I think could benefit from age, which is not going to happen. What has happened to our lighting all of a sudden? What? Look at this. The sun like, will come heads, out tomorrow. Oh, yeah, dude. Our heads are like, this is crazy. Sorry. Y'all, you're going to see it in my glasses the Ooh, sun man oh, look at this over over oh, exposing oh, do we need to move forward so that line's gonna come up this amateur video hour over here well the sun wasn't even out snow was about to fall y'all man i say we just roll with it so anyway How about my that? personal favorite of, of mine is definitely this one out of the two yeah um i like the funk that this one out. got really dry 0.996 did, um did and I... it was done in like the weird thing about this one is it seemed to keep going longer than the Suburban Brett. Like, what could it be, the temperature? No, it could have just been off-gassing, too. Yeah, this it's is the hotter hot. one. You would have thought this one would be like, boop. Did I put funk in the notes with this one when we tried it last time, last week? No, you put Brett question mark. I'm the only one that really, like, ad-libbed notes until we got to the ones we didn't yeah. like. But I put citrus, funky, funky Sprite. <laughs> Well, I was just wondering Barley if, wine, was, if the bar funk is coming out more than last week. I'm already feeling this. Barnyard. What? Woody notes, floral, finishes dry and light. Mm hmm But it's also nearly 7%. Right. Which is issue... Was you mm hmm Which is crazy because the recipe called for it to be 4.7%. And all of our beers are up near 7 Definitely out of the two of that I have, I like this one. Like that one? But the Suburban Brett... I know that it's got some things in it that could age over time, so I do wish that I had bottled conditioned See? that one. We'll I told you. I know. All right, let's move next. on to the next one. I'm not going to slam that. I'm just going to keep moving on. Oh, Let's do one Slammed of yours. It. All right, here we go. This is Rustic B56. B52s. Just B56. kidding. This was, theoretically, this was our favorite, by the way. When we put everything on the board and we all marked what we thought was our favorite slash what is. we... Thought was a classic style of sorts. This is the one that got the most um, votes. Damn right it did. <laughs> so Imperial Rustic B56 OG oh, was 1051. Was. Got down to 099. This one really. Yeah. This is actually. This looks like the, when I have too much is, vitamin E. Is this keg or bottle condition? This bottle. Yeah, it's clear as hell. Mm -hmm. So we said things like floral, juicy, fruit mm. lingers, dry, peppery, bitter. First time I've gotten a creamy mouthfeel of any of them. I put funky, farmhouse, saltwater, cotton slash linen, classic saison flavor, but slightly more medium body. And this one was. Rustic. This is actually a very. This is saison y saison. Nine, 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 nine. Good God, look at us, dude. We can't, this is embarrassing. I have let's a move light. the table up. I have a light in my house. But it's just the sun, man. The sun All right, keeps coming come out. Let's, I'll move the camera first. There we go. Amateurs. Now the sun's in our face, but people can see our beer. <laughs> Look at that, how clear that is. Is that better, Chip Walton? All right, it we're is. still in frame. So, yeah, it is extremely clear. Um, I can't remember all of the ones we had, but tasting out of the three that we've had, I like mine a lot, but this does seem like the most classic. Mm, it's different. It also seems to just have a little bit more like character. Yep. What it's is it not as for the yeast? Where did you put that in your notes? This unique yeast can be used in a saison, farmhouse ale, or other Belgian sales where high ester <laughs> levels are important. Rustic typically produces a lot of bubble gum and juicy aromas that complement complex maltiness, which we mm. do not have. Right. Sixty-eight to eighty degrees. Uh, this strain tests positive for STA1 what gene. What the hell is that? Therefore considered to be Saccharomyces oh. cerevisiae. Someone's going to... I'm not even trying it. Cerevisiae. Yes, sure. Or... Variant diastasis... Diastasis... I'm not drunk. I just don't read long words very well. Latin. Latin? 
Damn you. Let's just keep them corn and we can go back to them. Mm -hmm. See, this one has a weird pink hue to it, which I noted last Bubble gum. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't it look pinker? It look does. It's got sure. like Ooh, a pink... almost knocked it over. I there swear to goodness, everything was clean. But there is something pink. I wonder if it's Gaston's mash paddle. Because I've used it and it's, it get, puts off a redness. I smell it. What do you smell? Funk. I smell like sour cherry. Sour socks. Wow. Farm. Farm. That is straight up farm right there, buddy. Yep. Farmhouse. It's got to have some farmhouse in it. So Suburban Bread is a bread of my oh, yeast well, that, that works Suburban great bread. as a secondary aging strain. I primaried with it. It really shines when used in wood barrels and will produce complex wow. and balanced aromas of sour cherry dried fruit. It can also be used as a primary strain for Brett only beers. Dude, let this this one age. It's in a keg. There's oh, only like shit. a half gallon left. I mean, I could bottle it. I could, I could bottle it and then just let it go. Yeah. I doubt I can degas it and then hit it with like bottle conditioning agents. Like we said, things like green apple, cotton candy, sweet tart, oh. pills malt. Ooh, sweet tart, apple juice, white grape. There is a sweet sort of funk. Does that make sense? Yeah. It smells, it's, I get that sweet tart. That's a cool sweet tart. You get to sweet it. tart? Yeah, more in aroma oh. like that. Kind of like that dusty powder I'm that would get funk. on your hands. Next, we have B51 Workhorse. Ooh, I like that. May I have a cup, please, Chip Walton? Or two cups? I really Ooh, wow. I think Gaston's mash pedal might actually Look be leaching that. red color. I thought I got it all out of there, Ooh, but Padale with a hellified gangsta tip. So this is Workhorse. Workhorse. Saison. Ooh. No problem. Workhorse is a strain to use on a wide variety of brews. Super clean. This, like this fast attenuating strain has good flocculation characteristics. High alcohol tolerance makes this a great option for big Belgian beers. So kind of mm. like this is almost like you would maybe That's put good. this in a triple. Yeah. Oh, eat right through it. 65 to 75 degrees. You went from 1051 to just one zero 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 zero. Yep. Light spice, slight banana flower yep. flavor. Yep. Dry finish, nothing overpowering. Nice example. Hits a lot of the style points. Mm. Carson said very one note. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to Carson. I like that, especially on the heels of this one, because this brings it back to being a Saison. Yep. This Brett one is cool, interesting, funky, but it's almost like Saison Plus. Yep. This is nice. Yeah. Workhorse. I, I almost like this one better than the Rustic now. Mm. I'm going to put Brian Flip Flops. I like that. That one's sweet. This one's drier. Try that, the Rustic, and then compare it to this one. It tastes really sweet. Oh, yeah. It tastes more apple juicy now all of a sudden. This comes off as drier, and this is one of those ones that I'm saying. It comes off as more bitter, even though it, or, it isn't. Look at how carbonated it is. Yeah. Maybe it's that. How does Brewlosophy manage all these details? Uh, they keep drinking. <laughs> look at that head. Oh, have we opened all of them? Good. So we now did. we're just chilling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So out mm -hmm. of what's before us, granted, Man. there was... A couple other beers. There was the Bootleg Biology Saison Parfait, as yep. he said. Imperial Citrus, East Bay Yeast Saison, uh, Saison Blend. Yeah, the Seyfail. Which, and, oh, should I tell uh, them what happened to that East one? East Coast Yeast Saison Brassier. Seyfail might have been my favorite if I had listened to Paul Illa. It had finished fermenting. I tasted it, and it had this sour hint to it. Like some lacto had gotten in there from open fermenting. Maybe. I don't know what happened. And Illa told me, bottle it now. And I screwed up and went up to the cabin. Came back and uh, tasted it. And it tasted like nail polish remover. That oxygen, I um, think, had worked its way in. So I had to dump it. It was so bad. Oh, he was saying if you bottled it and maybe hit it with whatever. Sugar and yeast or that, that stuff that Chuck uses to bottle condition 
what oxygen might have been in there would get eaten up and no shit? cleared out. Oh, no, I'm, that was with a question mark, not a period, but oh. I guess I'm right, is what you're saying. I guess I Paul was insinuating, like, if you bottle it now and do a little bit of secondary fermentation in bottle condition, it will eat some of that up. And some instead, of you were like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna triple down on the oxygen getting into this beer. In Chuck's episode, all of his recipes, his last step is um, bottling with a mix of sugar and this other thing. It's kind of like a... A casking agent that hmm. you can also do in bottles to basically do a secondary fermentation. Hmm. This is a very boring section of the video, but Maybe we we'll drink. link it right here. No, put it over here. Oh, right here. This product right here. This is what Chuck, award-winning Gosnell. 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 God bless, man. Gosnell. Just, this video is the worst. No, it's not. Well, overall, I think it was a good experiment, man. I, I liked it. I, um, I would. I think Mine I am like going to crackers now when you go back to try this again with these two yeasts, but add some spice to it. Maybe I'll do another experiment. Brew 10 gallons, split it four ways, and change the spices with those two yeasts. Just by yourself, right? You're not going to involve the yeah, rest of Yeah, I'm not going to have anybody come over and do this with me. It's just by myself. Me, myself, and I. Maybe I'll just make a one gallon and split it four ways. Everybody gets a... Half a cup, and I'm putting a whole <laughs> imperial <laughs> pouch in there. Forget you, Chip Walton. Before we wrap up and take a little beer nap, we want to thank a couple of Patreon supporters that have been with us pretty much since the beginning. We give a shout out to Brandon Allen. What up, homie? Paula Weba, Gregory West, and Adam Joyce. These are some people helping to keep Chop and Brew going, so we hope you support them mm -hmm. at patreon.com slash chop and brew. Get yourself some fun rewards. Keep the show going. Keep keep us out here in very, the garage. Very unscientific experiments going. This is scientific. You feel like this was scientific? Yeah, scientific enough? I dare you to mix them all together. I don't have much oh, left. Oh, this should be the closing edits right here. Play, play the music. What are you topping it off with? I don't know. Beer. Oh, is it beer flavored beer? No. I, there's a little of all of them in there already. Wait, let me mix it. With your finger? Well, you want me to mix it? Here, this pen came out of your bag. God knows where it's been. my ass. That's scientific. You can keep that pen. Get the suburban bread in there too. Mm, tastes good. Really? A guy named Brett who lives in the suburbs. That's cool. Hmm? It's actually not bad. It's, it's not. Bad. It's kind of pathetic. Saisons, you crazy. crazy. You drunk. Go home. That's no. crazy how blue it looks on video, mm -hmm. but not in person. Wow. Look at these eyeballs. Blue ice. Blue steel. <laughs> Since the Saison thing. You took a bunch of pictures. I have like Josh Janos' party. Oh, Josh. We got me making some green. Some green balls. chili salsa. Oh, what are those Look green at balls? His, look at this picture, dude. What the hell? Is that? What the hell? Ned F NF Doom. Oh, <laughs> what are those green balls? They're tomatillos. Oh. I thought they were green balls. <laughs> Salty balls. Really? You're going to put an ad it's on a 15 second video on For ruffles. Uh, 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 uh. Word box. You got to be kidding me. That's a long ass intro. You know how Merriam Webster, it's like 32 se seconds. It's a fear. Hello, everyone. Thanks for choosing my video. Well, Too high. right now I will oh. show you how to pronounce this word. Let's start. Saffir. Saffir. Wow. Saffir. That's deep. And I will repeat again. Oh, Shut really? up. Slowly. Saffir. Here, here's a guy in Germany. Zafir. See, Whoa. like I said. Zafir. Zafir. Za. Zafir. Za. Za. Zafir. Zafir. Wow. 
All right. I'm glad we were recording that. Zephyr. That's how you make a blooper reel. I, I got it out of, um, what is it, Radical Brew? Uh, Drew Beecham. Hold on. Let's start yeah, that so over. Which, it's experimental. Brewery. Experimental. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Are you going to write it down? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. All right. Hey. That's what you get when you All make right. fun of Chip Walton. Whatever. All right. I'm not drunk. I just don't read the long words very well. 